It's playoff time around Texas, the regular season in the books. Time to segue into the playoffs. Dave Bear here with Danny Davis and Rick Cantu. And as always, we're going to highlight four games. These four have a little more uh, pressure packed with the lose and your through mentality of the playoffs. Danny, let's start with you. Action starts tonight at House Park, Leander, and McCallum. Who are you liking this one and why? You know, with the past few years, except for with the exception of uh, the game a couple years ago with Blake Travis and McCallum, I think Rick was there where, you know, Blake Travis made a stop at the goal line to win that game. These 25, 26, 4A by district games have just been ugly. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pick Leander to win this game, but I actually think it's going to be relatively close. Um, McCallum has 2,000 yard rushers on the team with Sabine Cannon, Clement Jones. Um, the defense has been playing pretty good. You kind of stack up some of the teams they've played. The Leanders played Vista Ridge being one. McCallum gave up 25, Leander gave up 21. So I don't think this is a typical 26 4 8 team. I think Leander is a little bit too talented. Um, they've been playing with their backs against the wall the last three weeks. Uh, and I was really impressed with the way they came back against Marvel Falls. And you look at some of those standouts that they have on defense. I think uh, Leander is going to win this game. It's going to be close, but the Lions are going to move on. And Rick? I agree with Danny. I think it's going to be close, but I think Leander is just a little bit better. I saw a breakout star last weekend, Ray Gibson, 150 yards from a sophomore, who only had about 250 yards total the entire season. And like Danny said, they came gangbusters the last three games. They had to win all three just to make the playoffs, and, and they, they did it. They, uh, they earned their slot. Rick, we'll stay with you for this next one. Probably the best game in the Central Texas area this weekend. Westlake Hendrickson at Gupton Stadium, 5A Division II playoff game. How do you see this one playing out? Well, you know, I, I think I've picked Hendrickson in the Pickums all 10 weeks this year. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, Here I am go. going with the upset. I am going with the Westlake wow. Chaparrals, the battle-tested <laughs> Chaparrals, with a 6-4 and four record against the 10-0 the and 0 Hawks. I would pick Hendrickson if they had their quarterback, but the absence of Xavier Conley makes a big difference. With him, they averaged 44 points a game. The last two games without him, 21. Yeah, and Danny? I'm obviously Samaje and Taj Malloy have been great this year. Um, about 2,300 yards combined, uh, 27 touchdowns between the two of them. But this game, you know, defense. Chance Waz, a Colorado bound safety, we've talked enough about him. He's actually returned two interceptions for touchdowns. When you take um, him, you take some of the other guys in that secondary tray, uh, Mosley, Josh, wide in my ears, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, They've only allowed one team, and that's Westwood, to throw for more than 200 yards against them. Wow. So that's a pretty good secondary. Mm -hmm. I think uh, when you take that, you take uh, the ball control offense that they're going to have. Obviously, Conley, not having Conley is going to hurt. But I think that they're going to be able to win this game and avenge that loss from last year, that 33-13 loss that they had against Westlake. All right, staying with 5A, going, down to the, going up to Division One, we have Bowie Cedar Ridge at the Kelly Reeves Athletic Complex at 7.30 tomorrow night. Danny, how do you see this one? We go with Cedar Ridge. Um, yeah, Charles Porter leads the area in receptions. He's been catching him from Michael McCann, who's had a pretty good breakout season this year. I actually like the Cedar Ridge running backs. Um, Nicholas Morello, um, Ronald Dogan, over six yards of carry between the both of them. I think that offense is just going to be just good enough to knock off Bowie and uh, move on to the second, second round in their first ever playoff here. Wow. And Rick? I'm going to go with Bowie. Uh, this could be their first ever 10 victory season. They're that close. Uh, they've been riding a good defense lately in the last four games. They've only allowed nine points a game. Austin Eschenberg has had a, a fabulous season at quarterback. Jeff Abels, I think, is one of the best coaches in the area, bar none. All right, and the final game on our slate, a 5A Division II game, Lake Travis Westwood. Last time we saw Lake Travis, they eked out a one-point win over Westlake to uh, claim the district title. Now they face a Westwood team tomorrow night at 7.30. Rick, let's stay with you. How do you like this one? Well, the last two times these teams uh, played each other, Lake Travis eked out a 54-16 victory <laughs> over Westwood. Bear Fenimore, it's kind of ironic that he would start his career at uh, Lake Travis, but ended, of course, at Westwood. Now he's getting to face Lake Travis in what could be their last game. Uh, I like the Cavaliers. Danny? I'm going to pick Lake Travis in this one. I like their defense. I like uh, two shutouts this season. Zach Davies on the defensive line, Luke Hutton in the secondary. Uh, linebackers like James Bailey, um, you know, Chase Pinnell is a wide receiver turned cornerback. He's been pretty good for them this season. I just like the way their defense is playing. and. 
I think this Lake Travis team is going to be pretty hungry after what happened to them last year, um, seeing their streak snap in the first round the way that it did. So I, I say they get the win, but don't expect it to be 53-16 again. Alrighty, there you have it. Make sure you check back with Statesman.com Friday night and Saturday to see who's still standing and whose season has come to an end after this uh, first weekend of playoff action comes to a close. We'll see you.